If you will turn with me to Mark 16. I want us to take a look back at the very simple beginning. Where we get our power. And I'm going to title this message, What Do We Believe? You know, as recently as last night, we were getting ready to go to bed. I was helping Doyle in, into bed. And he told me, he said, I've got some real belly pain. And I was going to go to bed myself, and I sat down for a minute, and I realized Doyle was in pain. And Kathy wasn't going to go to sleep. Kathy needed to help Doyle pray. We did. We prayed together. It's amazing, the power of God. It is amazing. I watched within just a couple of minutes. I watched things change. His shape changed. And the pain went away. That's what we want. That's why we become Christians. We want to see the power of God. We want to see the same miracles that Jesus did on the earth when he walked here as a man. We want to see those miracles. All the time that I grew up in church, and I went to denominational churches, I went to a charismatic church, I didn't see many miracles. I was always looking for one. I wanted to see God work. And you know who I wanted to see God work with more than anybody else? Me. I wanted to know there really was a God. I wanted to really know that he was for me. I wanted to really know that he'd do something for me. Because I didn't see that. I felt like I was never enough. That there's just something about me that just, I was just never enough. That God was going to do something with me. You know what, that is an absolute lie of the devil. And we're going to begin at the beginning. Go with me to Mark 16. Right, right. What do we believe? I met a woman outside of a laundromat one day. God told me to give that woman some money. I got out of my car. I had the money with me. I handed it to her. And she was, she was obviously just thrilled because she needed it. And she looked at me and she said, you know what? I'm a believer. I said, well, amen. I said, what do you believe? You know, I caught her off guard. She didn't know how to answer that question. I said, what do you believe? And she looked at me and she said, well, Jesus in the Bible. Do you know that the Muslims believe in Jesus? Do you know you don't see a lot of them getting miracles either? So I had a chance to tell her, to minister to her, what we need to believe. Jesus tells us exactly what we need to believe. I love it. It's not vast. It's simple. It's simple. Mark 16, starting in verse 14. He says, afterwards he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat. That's Jesus. And upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart. Because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen from the dead. I still remember. I tell you, I can, I can tell you right where I was at. I was on Mr. McConnell's farmland. And it was 6 o'clock in the morning on Easter Sunday. And we were all out there for the sunrise service. And they handed all us kids, I was probably about 10, they handed all us kids a white styrofoam cup with a seed in it with a little growth. And this had something to do with the resurrection and I couldn't figure it out. I, I, I looked at that and I was listening. I said, something doesn't make sense here. Jesus rose from the dead. Yes, we sang about that every Easter. But there was no power. There was no power. There was no miracles. There was no voice of God. There was no hope. Now, verse 15. And he said unto them, go into all the world and preach the Ten Commandments. No, you don't have the wrong Bible. It doesn't say that, does it? Jesus doesn't say that. He doesn't say, go into all the world and preach the law. He 
doesn't say that. Our Messiah, right after he stepped out of the grave, what does he say? He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. Not the Ten Commandments, not the law, not the Old Testament. Preach the gospel. The gospel. And he said, and go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. I have preached the gospel to my cats. It says, he that believeth. Whoa. Believeth what? He that believeth. Believeth what? The gospel. Not a vast amount of scripture. He that believeth the gospel. There is your instruction. He that believeth the gospel. He that believeth the gospel and is baptized shall be saved. And he that believeth not the gospel shall be damned. And these signs, now we're getting into miracles. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Believe what? These signs follow them that believe. Believe what? The gospel. Amen. The gospel. These signs follow them. These miracles follow them that believe the gospel. The gospel. And what are those signs? These signs shall follow them that believe the gospel. In my name, they shall cast out devils. You know, I've done that. They shall speak with new tongues. I do that. They shall take up serpents. I don't do that. And if they drink any deadly thing, we live in the world, folks. It says, deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. And they shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover. I've done that. Why? Because I believe the gospel. Because I believe the gospel. I don't believe the Ten Commandments. I believe the gospel. I don't believe the law of Moses. I believe the gospel. Right here, Jesus said, you want signs and wonders and miracles? You've got to believe the gospel. The gospel. You've got to believe the gospel. Now, go, to me, go with me to Romans 1, verse 16. The Apostle Paul says the same thing. The Apostle Paul in Romans 1, 16, talking to the Romans, talking to those Romans, talking to those guys hanging out in Italy. He said, for I am not ashamed of the gospel. He doesn't say, I am not ashamed of the Ten Commandments I learned. He doesn't say, I'm not ashamed of the law. He said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not afraid to use it. It says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Why is he not ashamed? I mean, he's standing up against every Pharisee and Sadducee, and they beat him every chance they get. But he said, I'm not ashamed of that gospel. And he says, for, because, why is he not ashamed of the gospel? For it is the power of God. That gospel in it has the power of God. There's your miracles. There's your belly pain disappearing in a couple minutes. There's that 500 bucks you need by Tuesday. There's that, that teacher that needs to be over here and not over there. That's the power of God. And it's in the gospel. It's in the gospel. For it is the power of God unto salvation. Unto salvation. That word does not just mean born again. It means safety. It means deliverance. It means protection. It means health. It means prosperity. The gospel holds all of that with the power. You want the power of God in your life? You've got to believe the gospel. You've got to believe the gospel. Now, go with me and I will show you exactly what the gospel is. Oh, if I, I remember the first time the light went on and God showed me. It's not 
left all of this that I tell you what, I went to Sunday school. I was an aqualite. And the only way you could be an aqualite was you had to memorize scripture. I'm sorry, folks, I cannot memorize. I quit the aqualites at 12 years old. I couldn't, mem I couldn't memorize. I just didn't have it. And I'm thinking this is what God is going to require of me and I don't have it. No. It says, moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. I declare unto you. Paul declares unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which you also have received and wherein you stand. By which you are also saved. There's that word again. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. Amen. Verse 3, here is the bona fide definition of what we need to believe to get the power of God. Here is the definition, exactly what you need to believe to get the power of God. It says, for I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. Paul received it. We know he did. He had lots of power. Right. How that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. Right. And that he was buried. And that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. There's your gospel. That's what you believe. That Jesus died for our sins. He died for our sins. I didn't know that Easter morning that Jesus died for my sins. I thought it was just another holiday that you got chocolate for. <laughs> I didn't know Jesus died for my sins. That is the gospel. And he was buried with my sins. And he rose up without my sins. He died and he was buried and he rose again. There is no gravestone for Jesus there is no tomb with a body in it. Jesus is alive. He was raised from the dead. He is alive forevermore. He's in this room right now. Alive. Why? Because he overcame death. He overcame death. He came out of the grave and death couldn't hold him. The Father raised him from the dead and death couldn't hold him. And you know what? That was my sins he was paying for. That was your sins he were paying for. And you say, well, what is the big deal about forgiveness of sins? I want you to go to one more verse and then I'll finish. Jeremiah 5.25. And this is God, Jehovah, speaking. He said, your iniquities have turned away these things. And it says, and your sins, your sins, have withholden good things from you. Now, I want you to consider this verse. Your sins have withholden good things from you. You see that verse? God's not withholding it. God's not withholding your good things. God's not withholding your good things. God wants to bless you. I mean, he created you. He loves you. God is love. He is not the one withholding the good things for you. He is not withholding a good job for you. He is not withholding your money from you. Unless you are full of covetousness. Then he just loves you enough not to give it to you. He is not withholding your healing from you. He is not withholding your healing from you. He is not withholding the good things from you. Children. Homes. Love, prosperity, health, safety. The Father's not withholding those from you. What's withholding them? Our sins. Our sins. 
But you know what that gospel does? It gets rid of the sin. That gospel that Jesus died for your sins, that he was buried, that he rose again, gets rid of your sins. And when your sins are getting rid of, here comes the blessings from a loving father. That is what we have to believe. We believe the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus. That's what we believe, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. That's where the power is. And tonight, I'm going to go over how you believe it. Amen? Right now, I want to ask if there's anybody watching, because this will go on YouTube, and we have a lot of people watching on YouTube. If there's anybody that needs born again, that needs Jesus in their heart, if there is anybody listening to me right now that you need Jesus in your heart, you know, Jesus said you must be born again. You must be. And we got a world that is spinning down into a flame. It's not going to get better, folks. Jesus is on his way back. You need to be born again. I love it. Somebody put up on, um, somebody put up on my Facebook. They said, it's not going to, uh, it's, what is it? Normal is not coming back. Jesus is. We are on the way out of here, folks. You need born again. How do you get born again? It is simple. Just pray this prayer with me. Jesus, I thank you that you died and you were buried and you rose again for me. Come into my heart. Lead me. Guide me. Fix me. And I ask this in your name. Amen. Welcome to the family. Amen. Welcome. Thank you.